Hello in part ones. Just wanted to welcome you back to my channel. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, I am so happy that you came. And I just would like to welcome you. First and foremost, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Helena Larson. I'm a trauma and recovery uh, coach. And um, Her Empowered Life is here to help support you. And uh, our mission is to help you heal your life embrace your story and claim your power um i am trying really hard to be on face not facebook live but instagram live but it's been really challenging with time wise so i want to continue to still offer you value and so i decided to create a video instead so um in this episode i just kind of want to share with you a little bit about my story and my journey um uh, especially on Tuesday, we're talking about launching your dreams. So really sharing with you the story on how I got started. So um, from the very beginning, I am originally from Singapore and uh, I left my home at the age of 16. And um, my first job was a telemarketing job. And I remember I was so scared. I was very shy. Um, whenever my mom would call me, say she has a cell phone bill that she needs someone to um, inquire and she tells me, you know, can you call? I would be like, oh, I'm so nervous. And so can you believe it? My first job was a telemarketer and um, I had to be on the phone a lot and it was very scary and nerve wracking. Um, but guess what? That, that job really helped me grow a thick skin. And then after that, um, I went to work for Citibank and that was a um, more like a sales job. So really, you know, talking about uh, the credit cards. And so that was my second job. Um, also the same thing, calling people and cold calling and uh, reaching out to people. And it was also another job that really helped develop my thick skin and really helped me develop my sales. My sales skill, I would say, really started way long before that. And I really didn't think about it until much later. So when I was uh, a child, I mean, maybe like, say, six or seven years old, my grandma actually uh, took care of us when my parents go to work. So um, she used to sell curry puffs. In Singapore, they have what they call curry puffs. And she would make them and then she would, uh, you know, put it in a basket and then she would say, you know, you need to go door to door. So in Singapore, we live in like high rise building with like a lot of houses on one level. And so I had to go door to door asking if people want to buy those curry puffs. And I didn't realize that that was sales. It was just what my grandma told me to do. But I guess that was kind of how my sales started. But again, you know, when the kids are running around asking someone to buy curry puffs most people will not say no to you but obviously to get a yes as i get into the sales job it, it got a little bit more difficult um and then after that i went into uh, marketing sales and marketing um i was working for a magazine company no actually i was working for a spa first so really uh you know marketing uh, the sales the spa packages that the spa offers, that was the other thing, doing road shows. So a lot of face-to-face -face contact with people and, um, you know, selling the perks of, you know, signing up for the spa packages. Um, and then through that kind of got into my coaching because uh, that was kind of where I started my coaching because I kind of had to help um, the girls who are on the road, in the road show with me with, you know, to kind of teach them what to say, um, kind of coach them with, you know, just professionalism and then just uh, having a crew that you kind of have to be in charge of. And then after that, I actually went into, um, what was it? After the spa, then I went into the magazine, uh, you know, sales and marketing for a magazine company. So that was selling ad spaces. So again, a lot of sales experience. I do have a lot of sales experience. 
and um and then after that i went into more like the holistic and wellness i moved to arizona for four and a half years and then over there i became a doula so doula is like a birth coach and so that was more like a medical i always wanted to be a midwife um but you know that was kind of i always wanted to be a nurse and then somehow i ended in sales so backstory so before i went into um the spa job i was actually a stay-at-home mom with my three children and uh, during that time i wanted to sew baby slings i wanted to sell them and so that was kind of where my entrepreneur blood in me comes out and then um that was kind of where i you know was thinking about being my own boss i've always been very interested in entrepreneurship but anyway but end up keep going back into sales because um, I got divorced and I needed a job that is more dependable. And and then I moved to Arizona for four and a half years, became a doula, uh, labor coach. Um, it seems like, honestly, if I never think about it, but like there's a lot of coach in my experience too, coaching in my experience. So that was kind of labor coach, helping the woman through her, her, her labor pains and all that stuff. And then never got to be a midwife. And then I moved back to Singapore. But um, doula at that time wasn't like a recognized thing because people are still very traditional. They don't really want, you know, somebody in their private birth. So then I went back to sales again, which is, you know, um, doing uh, selling ad spaces and marketing and advertising um, with a magazine company. And then... That was what I did for a long time. And then I came back to um, the U.S. I met my husband three years after I got divorced. And then I met my husband and then I moved here. And then I went into banking and I never left. I'm still I'm still in banking uh, on, on my side job. And then um, as a, in the, I became a banker and then I became a, uh, a coach, essentially a coach. Uh, sales coach and um, to, I'm still a coach right now just coaching my team um, and <clears throat> I've always been passionate about coaching you know it's really a joy to just watch people grow um, overcome their own mindset overcome their limited beliefs and um, for a time I wanted to and and but then that snagging feeling about this entrepreneurship in in me still 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 you know, it's kind of, if you have a dream, it just kind of in the back of your mind, just like keep asking you to come back and come back, you know. And then um, on the side, before I went into banking, I went back into making slings uh, because I was, I, I, I wanted to stay at home with my, my little one. And so that was kind of nice. I made baby slings. I went to uh, craft shows and marketing my own product. And then, uh, but then I needed to kind of build my credit and um, establish some sort of work history in America. And so that's why I went into banking. But then again, like I said, my entrepreneurship, entrepreneur uh, love comes back to me. And then I decided to go into wedding planning. Um, then I went into wedding planning and went to different road shows and that was fun too. But I wanted to do more. I wanted to help people and I remember I wanted to to create a website to um, obviously present the stuff that I'm doing for others you know to market my business and I met this lady and she I was trying to tell her what I was trying to do you know I was I wanted to uh, I wanted to get into coaching I wanted to do uh, event planning too as well but she completely like was confused about what I wanted to do. And so that kind of got me thinking a little bit about what 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 was confusing about what I was trying to tell her. But I guess that was a good thing because it got me to step back and really relook at what why what are the main what is the main focus of all those things that I wanted to do because there was like a lot now thinking back like I wanted to do event planning, I wanted to sell products, I wanted to um, coach so really what am I doing so then I went back to the drawing board and I was thinking you know really where where's my heart my heart is 
um, to help women. You know, wedding planning is fine. You know, you're helping women in that sense, organizing and planning their wedding. Um, and then selling products is fine. You know, yes, selling products. But I really am looking at something much deeper. And really the heart was to serve women who had been through different things like I have been through. Like my been through like my trauma, my uh, the abuse that I had I suffered before, and and so I decided to re re niche myself to really think about okay, so what am I wanting to present to others so that way it is easier. So before I went into the um, trauma and recover uh, trauma and abuse recovery coach, I was looking at just a live coach and my niche was for women to kind of help them with same thing you know feeling stuck feeling overcome their limited beliefs um, helping them through emotion emotional stuff but there is so many life coaches out there there's just so many of them and uh, I niche down to abuse uh, recovery and abuse trauma and recovery abuse coach abuse recovery coach because I found that my my niche was really to help someone that is going through that because I've been through it myself and I'm able to walk them through how to get out of it um so that's just my kind of my journey in my career and um that kind of my life story kind of brought out a lot of um what do you call it, passion in woman empowerment because um, there was a lot of suffering that I went through when I was a child being abused. And then um, as I got older, I went into abusive relationship. And then later, um, I evolved into, you know, helping others in in just during my job you know when I was doing my other jobs like marketing and sales and stuff I was really good with people and I was able to share my story and a lot of them actually um was moved by it and made some changes in their life so that's how I eventually went into creating her empowered life so long story short it doesn't you don't have to know exactly where you're going and it's important to niche down and it's important to know where your passion is you know i think um a lot of people are into you know looking searching for that career that makes them feel happy but i think the definition for me when it comes to career has changed over the years it's really more around the purpose of what I want to do versus um, versus what a job title is. And maybe that's something that you can think and consider too. And entrepreneurship is something that you you should be passionate about. It, you know, I think the, the, the world has glamorized entrepreneurship when it isn't really that glamorous. But um, if you can find your purpose and combine it with what you do for a living, I think that's a blessing. Um, I hope my story helped you kind of think a little bit about where you are in your journey in terms of your career. But I look forward to sharing more um, uh, topics around career building and entrepreneurship in our next video so until we see each other again have a great weekend and i'll talk to you soon